started live a bit earlier. The Nelson family welcoming. Don't forget, we're about to interview Freddie Quinn. Freddie Quinn is a massive comedian on TikTok. He's larger than life. I can't wait to interview him. To be fair, I'm a little bit nervous. Okay, I'm a little bit nervous because I'm not sure what's going to come out of Freddie's mouth, but we'll see. It's all good fun. It's all good fun. I don't forget, these are all of the people that I've interviewed so far. I've done Dan Sprague. I've done uh, Reese Thomas Hubbard. I've done, uh, oh, Par Parry P is in there. Parry, I need to see you, mate, to be fair. If you want to come on. Ian, I'm a little bit earlier. I've decided now I'm going to go on a little bit earlier just to build up a few people in the room uh, ready for five past nine to see um freddie quinn followed by freddie quinn is iris official music iris official music is literally in my room right this very second uh, i have just read it uh, and uh, i've i'm all good uh, so iris don't forget you are on at 9 35 you must make sure that you're following me and what will happen is what will happen is you can jump on and then you'll be able to you'll be able to go on. Uh, no, well, you can network with people. This is about interviewing uh, celebrity TikTokers. That is what I do. I've got uh, Freddie Quinn coming up in it, which is a great comedian. Uh, I've been looking forward to doing him. He was meant to be on last week, but he got banned for 24 hours, uh, for seven days. So I had to wait. Uh, but Iris Official Music, she's just dropped a brand new tune called Merry Go. Make sure you go and check that out. She dropped it yesterday, guys. I've used it in a couple of my videos. She is coming on at 9. 35 she is actually in the room now she's in the room now i can see her right up there uh, all ready to go uh, so look thank you for um thank you for uh thank you for joining in my live thank you for coming on board thank you for being here to watch the interview don't forget i interview every monday wednesday and friday as of next week i've got all next week booked apart from one slot and then the week after i do a full week uh, of the first week of march and i've literally got the whole week booked i've got 12 tiktokers that we're going to interview for you and let me tell you who they are uh, i will let you know who they are for march we are currently have uh, Holly Wilson, uh, we've got uh, James Billingsley, we've got the Ginger Marketeer, we've got I'm Josh from England, we've got Husey Boy, we've got Son of Beanie, we've got Richard Eats, Jake Gould might be on, I'm not sure about him yet, we're trying to figure that out, uh, Chrissy G, I'm looking forward to interviewing her, Lady with the Teeth, uh, and Natalie Clara I've got on as well, I might have another, I've got another couple of people on for uh, for February, I'll look at my calendar, I'll let you know who's in, uh, let, but I need to keep Freddie Quinn on there, don't forget guys, it's over 18s only in this live, especially, yay Richard you're in, nice to see you my friend, nice to see you, you are on on the 4th of March, at uh, 9 p.m my friend i've got you booked in you're in my calendar don't worry you'll be there you're on first and i'm i'm not sure who's on after you it might be jake gould and um, i've tried to get him in to be fair and I want to make sure that he's the one uh, he's the one that the plays tricks on his um on his um his jewish father and he just keeps saying how long till i get slapped <laughs> It's when you might see it cycling behind me. Who's been on last week? I had loads of people on last week. I've, I've done down. I, my very first one was Dan Sprague, Reese Thomas Hubbard, TikTok Nicky Mum, uh, Sam Martin Official. I've done Sean Perrot. I've done M M My Mummy Twelve. Uh, I've done Beanie. I've done loads of people. I've done uh, St um, Survival Stee. Um, uh, Adventure Jenny, uh, then I ended with um, with Kino and Liz, uh, and I've also done, um, who was Saturday? Oh yeah, Chris Baker, uh, Chris Chris uh, Chris Slater rather, Chris Slater 22, he was in, and he was the actor that played Frank in Tracy Beaker, so I'm getting some big names on board, that's what we're here to do, we're here to interview the big people, and that's what we're going to do on TikTok, it will get bigger and bigger and bigger, and I'm interviewing every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and let me just make sure I've got my little thing on because I might have turned it off earlier we're all on make sure people can see me and um, so tonight as I say it's Freddie Quinn don't forget I'm picking a different charity every month this month's charity is all about London youth it was comically for the first week but I've changed that now we did it for that week now going forward it's gonna be London youth if you're from the UK you can donate here directly you'll see a little thing up the top here says London youth the money goes directly to them it doesn't go anywhere near any of my stuff my PayPal details are on my link on my bio and there's another link to London youth there if you click on my link in my bio for pay for London youth 
safe, then I will see how much people have donated. Uh, and if you go on my PayPal, every penny that goes to my PayPal will go directly to London Youth. Any gifts that you're giving here, they just go in, they just get cashed. I'm, I'm not worried about those. There's, there's not a lot in that anyway, to be fair. Uh, so don't forget, all the proceeds from live will go to charity. Uh, yeah, actually, all of them. <laughs> I forgot to uh, have a chat about that one. Uh, but yeah, we're going to put all of, all of them for this this event will go to charity, guys. Uh, everything you put in it. So if you gift in TikTok, they take their cut. That will go to charity too. But don't forget, tonight... Tonight is all about Freddie Quinn. He should be live at the moment. Hopefully, I'm, I'm hoping it is. You have got to be over the age of 18, really, to, to watch Freddie. Um, so please make sure you where you can come back at 9.35 uh, because Iris Official Music will be on. Um, but I'm going to make sure that we're all good. Everything's all fine. I've got all my tech all ready. I've got my questions ready. And we'll see what's going to happen with, with our old Freddy. I hope he doesn't get banned tonight. Let's hope not because uh, we can't be doing any of that. Uh, I am a little bit warm. Oh, I'm a little bit hot thinking about I'm going to talk to Freddy. I did put a hoodie on to be fair. So maybe I shouldn't have done. <laughs> Uh, but Freddie will be alright, we'll figure him out, we'll see what goes on Who else is in? Chris, nice to see you Chris, just to let you know I have had confirmation That um, If you can, yeah please If anyone's under 18, they really can't be In Freddie's interview, but let me ask him first I'll ask him not to swear um, But he might not be able to because I think he's just That type of guy to be fair uh, If there is an issue, then you guys just deal with it down there. I'm all right. Let me just, let's see how we get on with Freddie. But I'm, I'm fairly sure he's all right. The first thing I'm going to say to him is can he just, uh, can he tame it just a little bit for the live? And we'll see where he go from there. But he might tell me to F off, might he? I don't know. <laughs> But look, I've interviewed some big TikTokers so far, big hitters. Uh, we, we haven't had anyone over a million yet. We will get there. Uh, I haven't had any verified people, but yet again, we are still trying. We are still trying to get some verified users for the last week of the month. Uh, yeah, Chris, uh, yeah, Iris Official Music has said she's definitely come on. If she doesn't come on, Chris, I'm going to look to you to go live with you, my friend. You are my backup plan. You are my backup plan. Uh, I know that. I know. Uh, I might have to just get on with it. I'm just going to deal with it. We'll see what he says. I'll just say, can he keep it a little bit clean? But if he can't, that is who he is, guys. That is who he is. And what we're trying to find out is to find out about TikTokers and about how they've got their... I mean, he's got... He has got... Hundred just under one hundred and fifty thousand followers. Just under one hundred and fifty thousand followers. He has been on TikTok for a little while, maybe two years, well, about a year and a half. He's been on, not done too well. So he'll he'll be coming on. He's done all right for his time being on, but his videos are absolutely hilarious, and they're all very the same in terms of the the format. And so they're really good. But we're going to ask him a few questions, see how we get on. It might be. I'm guessing it's going to be hilarious. That's what I'm hoping for. He had a break off. Oh, did he really? Well, I'll ask him. I can ask him that, can't I? If you've got any questions, make sure you pop them down there. I'll get a little notification that you've asked a question. So if you want to ask Freddie a question, pop it down here and we'll pop it on the screen. And uh, hopefully Freddie will see it. So uh, he's going to come over in a minute. I'll just see. Let's have a look. Ian, have you got any extra questions for me? Help me out, mate, yeah? Uh, let me just see Freddie. All of the people I've interviewed are all on live, would you believe? Freddie Quinn has got 19. Let's go and ask for him. Quinn, how, how are you doing, doing, my friend? Not bad. How are you? I'm all good. You're not. You're not nervous, are you, by any chance? No. Oh God, I'm <laughs> shitting myself. <laughs> are you? Why? Ah, uh, no. I'm only. It's a. I'm only pulling my leg. Look, look. I think your stuff, Freddie, is absolutely fantastic. I've. I, I, you keep coming up on my FYP. I keep stopping. And I watch the whole video because I think it's absolutely brilliant. So keep up the good work, my friend. Now you know what Do we're you? here for tonight, don't you? Yeah. It's not about it's not about me. It's about you. So I'm going to ask you some questions, and hopefully you might give some people a bit of a hint or a tip of how to make their account bigger because you've got about 147,000 followers at the moment. Although the only thing I will say is you've been on TikTok for a little while. Is that correct? Yeah, but I took a break. Um, so I started like last March during lockdown, probably. And then I made it till about June and I was like, fuck it. I can't be asked with this. And then I think I went on once in July. Um, and then I didn't go on again pretty much until mid December. And then wow. from December till now has been pretty much nonstop. 
Oh, that's really. Have you? Uh, and I'm guessing that you haven't got any gigs at the moment, so you've obviously got nothing, not an awful lot to do, like most of us, to be fair, at the moment. Is that right? Yeah, there's no gigs. Uh, there's a couple of like live streaming events and stuff, and Zoom, like Zoom gigs, they call them, but they're fucking oh. awful. Like they're not oh, even they're... remotely funny. Yeah, they're dreadful <laughs> because because it's you don't even feel like a comedian. You feel like a YouTuber. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah. because y y you you have to modify your set for a reaction that never comes, so it's just it's just not the same. So I've kind of been swerving them really because it's just not the same as live stand up. You, you obviously thrive. I've seen some of your uh, little clips from your stand up, and you thrive off the audience. You know, I think you're uh, probably one of the comedians I've seen, and there's not many comedians I've seen on TikTok, to be fair, that, that aren't, you know, full full on celebrities, unlike your celebrity TikToker, um, that you, 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 you sort of bounce off the audience members, which work quite well. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, is, is every comic need, needs an audience because, like, without, like, an audience, it's just you talking to chairs and that, innit? Do you know what I mean? Like, if there was nobody else in the room... <laughs> Just, it's just me holding a fucking lecture to furniture. So, <laughs> you know, you need an audience, otherwise it just doesn't, it don't work. Oh, um, well, the good news is for us tonight, we've got, I've got some people in my room, you've got some people in yours, so make sure that there's a little ticket on my screen that our charity at the moment for this week and for next week is London Youth, okay? So if anyone wants to give money to charity, they can do that, and it'll be on, be on, on behalf of Freddie and anyone else I interview this week, uh, so click on that ticket. Uh, you can also click on the link in my bio for London Youth as well, and my PayPal details are there. Every penny that goes in that PayPal gets paid to whatever charity I'm supporting on that week. Uh, if you gift in TikTok as well, every gift goes to TikTok. Because look, I'm 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 not doing this for the money. I'm doing it for a bit of fun, a bit of enjoyment, and I'm trying to educate people a little bit about uh, about TikTok. So let me ask you a question then, Freddie. Yeah, uh, why did you choose TikTok and not Instagram or YouTube or you know any of the other uh, forms of social media? Um, well, I'm already on Instagram, um, and it's it's fine, but I just Personally, I see it for more pictures and things like that. Uh, yeah. YouTube, I'm on as well. But the thing is, is if you look at all the viral videos on YouTube now, it's literally just like, you know, I fucking spent two million pounds on Pokemon cards, and this is what I got. Or I bought an island, and this is, or and it's like, I, I, I mean, I don't have even a fraction of that money. So where do you even start? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, what, look, I'm, I'm asking you another question. You, you, you're obviously are you a full time comedian. Is that your job? Yeah. So, so that's your day job, your night job. That's what you live to do. So, how have you managed during lockdown? Well, I'm not really because uh, the gigs. Well, the gigs stop. So, in uh, on March the whenever. Um, when they announced the lockdown, that was pretty. Uh, that was pretty mental, and I, um, I mean, I lost. I, I mean, literally, as the, as because what happens is um, comedians book between six and twelve months in advance. So yeah. I was, um, I was pretty much booked for the rest of the year in 2020, and literally, as Boris Johnson was announcing the, um, the lockdown. I was getting emails left, right, and centre coming in and stuff, and I was checking the emails, and I'd lost like six grand's worth of work before he'd even finished talking, and I was like, oh dear, uh, and then I just, I, I, I didn't check my emails for a couple of days, but I, I just lost everything, basically, and I lost my entire year's income straight away. Wow. So we did some gigs over summer that were like outdoor gigs that were socially distanced, and it yeah, was... Yeah. It was a way of making pocket change. We didn't make much money or anything like that, but it was just a way of sort of, you know, uh, getting rid of the ring rust. Um, yeah. And then we managed to do a few in uh, October as well, September, October. But then they changed the guidance again, and we went into lockdown in November. Then we went into... Yeah. I, I went into supply teaching for a little bit in November to try and get some money coming in. Uh, and then in December... They relaxed the rules again, did a few gigs here and there. Um, and then I had a big one on New Year's Eve. I had um, 
a 500 quid gig on New Year's Eve because New Year's Eve is a big time. And I yeah. thought the government are definitely going to cancel that. They're definitely going to cancel it. So what I did was I put in another uh, week's worth of supply for the first week yeah. back when schools were back. And so I was like, all right, OK, so if he cancels it, then I'll just do the, the school one. Yeah. And then literally on the 30th, the day before, he cancelled um, New Year's Eve and closed the schools. And so it's like, great. So I ended up um, I ended up getting a delivery job for Iceland. And I've uh, been doing that sporadically. Uh, but there's, there's just no shifts. So, let yeah, that's you, where I'm at. You, 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 touched, you touched on something there. And I, obviously, I would never have known it. But what do you teach? Uh, I used to teach English. Really? And, and, and yeah. is your language the same in the classroom as it is on TikTok? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm quite good, actually, at being able to sort of... Um, but it's weird because you, you do get people, quite a lot of people who I used to teach, who will come into the chats and stuff. And so, I mean, I started originally just blocking them because, like I say, I already look enough like a paedophile without having, like, children that I used to teach going, how are, how are they? You know, uh, so, uh, so, I tried, so I tried blocking everybody, Did but there's thousands and thousands of kids, man. So it was just like, oh, fuck it. Let them do what they want to do. They'll get bored of, eventually. <laughs> that's brilliant. I think, look, I think that's a that's a great thing to be able to fall back on if you need it, to be fair, isn't it? But you've obviously, you, your passion is comedy and you, I can't say you're not good at it. And you're probably great at it. You're probably the best teacher in the school, to be fair. Uh, my daughter, oh, my no, daughter, no, no, teacher. <laughs> and I, 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 my, one of my questions I was going to ask you, and it's a bit weird because I did send it to you that I was going to ask it you, but I think I've just shot myself in the foot. So, uh, the question was, what inspired you to work in your current niche? Well, you do co comedy and you're a comedian, so it sort of gives it away, really, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's it. It's not like it's something that I, I, I thought too much about. I'm a stand-up comic. Yeah. There's not many comics on you on uh, on TikTok. I've got loads of um, uh, videos of me on stage and stuff uh, that is filmed in quite high quality. Uh, so I just, you know, and it's unique as well. And it, it, it's unique. It's your stuff as well. You know, you're not yeah. like I put loads of rip-off comedy on mine. Not your not your stand-up comedy, but old British comedy goes on mine I every mean, now and again. Within so. my Within my thing as well is I'm I'm quite a dark comic. I'm quite you know off offensive, and there isn't many comics like that operating at the moment um, because it's not really the um, not the PC apparently. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, but but I think that's what makes you different. I think that's what makes you it makes you a little bit different, and you stand out a little bit more. More of the fact you got a big beard and a bald head that stands out a little bit as well. To be fair, but I mean that in the nicest possible way. <laughs> I'm not heckling you. Just letting you know, I'm not heckling you. Yeah. Okay. Go on. <laughs> hey, look. Just let everyone know. Look, there is a little button on my screen. It is for London Youth tonight. I'm back on again Monday, Wednesday, and Friday next week. I've got a full week next week. I've loads of TikTokers at over 100,000 people. Uh, I've got after Freddie. It is Iris official music. I pray to God she turns up. Uh, I've been trying to get her to contact me, but she said she was coming. We'll have to just suck it and see and see what happens. But we've got Freddie Quinn on at the moment. He's just there, guys. I tried to get him on two weeks ago, but he got banned. You know, the night before he's coming on, he got banned. And then he got banned the night before last week. Were you off for 24 hours or do you get on sooner? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I keep getting banned for adult nudity. Oh, I see that. <laughs> my main account, I got banned off my main account from August. I only got back onto it in January off my other account. It's got 45,000 followers on. And I only, literally only got it back in, in uh, January. And that was for adult, that was for nudity as well. I thought, yeah, same as you. I was sat here like this. Oh, no, no, it was, apologies, it wasn't nudity. It was for being, uh, not meeting age requirements. I mean, come on. I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not the youngest yeah. of people, but I'm not, but it is weird anyway. So, um, have you got any inspirations? And you can't say me, but have you got any inspirations on TikTok? <laughs> no. <laughs> Why would I be inspired by anyone on here? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, Thomas. Actually, I have come to think of it. My uh, my main inspirations are Nelson Mandela. Uh, Mother Teresa, 
and fucking Brilliant. Charlie D'Amelio. Come on, Thomas. Jesus Christ. Have <laughs> I got any inspirations on TikTok? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect any other answer apart from that one. To be fair, that's no, brilliant. Look, I, I mean, I've got people on TikTok that I like watching, um, so I quite like watching. Do you know who Becky Mill Two is? Yeah. Who? Uh, Becky Mill Two. She's a uh, Rebecca Goodwin is her name. She's a uh, she's an OnlyFans. Uh, I don't know what you I would call them. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, star. I wouldn't be looking at any of those, would I? But happily married. But, but um, what she does is she gets, I mean, obviously she dresses on there and, you know, she kind of uses it to promote her OnlyFans, but she gets a lot of hate, uh, but she responds to the comments and she's incredibly funny. Uh, so I quite oh, like her. Um, there's another one that I quite like called Gemma Brown X, who is a really, she's only got about 20,000 followers, but what she does is she takes classic moments from British television and remixes yeah. them into a song. Oh, I like that. I like that. So, <laughs> you know, like, for example, the, um, you know, for example, the uh, uh, the Come Down With Me, uh, You Won, Jane, Enjoy The Money. It's that kind oh, of yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where yeah, she'll yeah. remix it to a full song, and it'll have the real audio in the background, and she'll be playing musical instruments. That's me doing a guitar. She'll be playing musical oh, instruments over the top and, like, sort of remixing the track, and she'll sing over the top of it. Just really good. It's just really creative. Was that a ukulele? It was some really small guitar. guitar yeah. <laughs> no, you have to. I'll have to find. I've, one of my moderators just said she's really funny. So, and that's what I'm looking for. People that have either got hundred thousand followers, and I'm starting to look for people now that have got a different quirk, a little bit different. Like Iris hasn't got. I know she has got 100,000, actually, to be fair, but uh, some people have only got 50,000, but I've got somebody on next to you that plays a saxophone live on TikTok, and I thought, that's something a bit different, isn't it? You know, people might want to see that, so something a little bit unusual. You're not going to be tuning for it, though, by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> and have you, you know when you do your videos, and where you, you obviously do a lot of pieces to camera where you've got a little a green screen behind you ever how long do you think about those or are they just things you see in the news and you just put it you, you go for it straight away do you take time to think of them uh, um some of it is uh stand up like like it's basic stand up like like when you break it down it's just stand up yeah. without an audience um so some of it is just stand up related and it's just stuff that I'll think because at the moment I mean I I I'm somebody who's quite prolific in terms of my writing. So in, in, in the stand-up world, I'm kind of known as somebody who writes an awful lot of uh, of, of stuff. Uh, but I haven't been able to write anything during lockdown because it goes out of date before you can even try it. So wow. let's say, for example, you write... A, you know what? I, I, I'll, I'll give you an example. I had a bit about Eat Out to Help Out, right? So... Yeah. I started doing it uh, in August, and it was killing it in the clubs. It was doing great. Then in September, it was still going well because people still remembered it. And I swear to God, 1st yeah. of October, it stopped working. It, it just stopped working. Oh, laughing. What, sorry? People just stopped laughing. Stopped working. Oh, really? Because so it's you... topical and it's gone. So, so you might have written... A fucking amazing thing about clapping for the NHS. Now yeah. that was that was last June. Look at all the things that's happened since then. Absolutely. So you're writing all these incredible things. You might have a great joke about um, storming the Capitol in the US. It's happened. It's done. It's gone. It's it's been yeah. and gone. What are you going to do? Wait until July and say, "Oh, do you remember storming the Capitol in in January?" Nobody remembers that far back. So yesterday's, it, yesterday's newspaper, isn't it? That's the way they look at it, isn't it, really? So, so a lot of it is basically the stand-up that I would do, but done on TikTok as a way of being able to put it out there in some form. Now, the idea is that when comedy clubs come back again, I'll be able to record the same sort of, uh, the same videos, but it'll be on stage rather than it'll be... Yeah. So it'll be even better, really, because rather than be being in my kitchen, I'll be on stage in front of 100 people or whatever, and, you know, it'll you stand better. Do you write for other people, then? You know, you said you I write a lot. Like, you. 
Yeah, I have done in the past. So if you think about all these, um, all the shows that you like watching on TV all have writers. So um, Mock the Week and 8 Out of 10 no, Cats. Boxes, does it? Well, sorry? Cat, catfish doesn't have writers. I've seen that on MTV, Catfish. That doesn't have writers, does it? <laughs> No, I mean like I mean like all the comedy shows and stuff like that all have uh, writers basically, and so I'll do a lot of stuff for that. Uh, and then there's like all the pro, you know, like Comedy Central's always putting out some shite, you know, like uh, roast battles. I've written for two seasons of that, and it's just like just random crap. Do you know what I mean? That you write for people. But... Do you get credited for it then? Nah. No, it's unless just, you're so unless you're one of the main people in the room, uh, in which yeah. case you so what so what will happen is um let's say you're doing a show for uh mock the week, for example. Yeah. You might get credited on that, but if you're doing something on, for example, like roast battles, what will happen is the company, Comedy Central, well the, the whoever produces roast battles will um will will hire writers and send them out information packs so you get information packs on comics and these are people these might be people that you've known for 10 years these might be people that you've known for five minutes and the information packs are fucking useful uh, useless they're like literally it's like it's like john got a first at oxford in art and it's like well am i gonna like am i gonna roast that do you know what i mean like you know john really likes baked potatoes and it's like i uh, i don't care um all the stuff like you know john john's mum's got cerebral pulp you're like yes i want that that's what i want to roast yeah absolutely but you never get that so and um, so with stuff like that they won't credit the writers because they don't want people to know that it's been written. Do you know what I mean? So, hang on. so mock, like mock the week where they come out with a really good answer to a question. You might have written one of those answers. Yeah, they don't think of it themselves wow. on the spot. Well, that's why. No, no, I, I didn't think the on the spot thing. I always thought that they they knew what the question was beforehand. But I honestly yeah, thought they wrote two themselves. weeks before. They, they know what the question is about two weeks beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be there'll be people who go on um like for example a friend of mine gary delaney who goes on there regularly he'll do his own stuff because he's a really prolific writer and he's still yeah. like uh very much in the circuit and what he'll do is before he goes on mock the week he will write for it and then he will uh he, he will do a few gigs in clubs and he'll literally test it out as if it's a comedy set uh but oh, there's wow. other there's other acts who either got pushed from the circuit to TV very quickly uh, because yeah. they ticked a box or because their face fit in a certain way. Um, mm. Or there's acts that just haven't been on the circuit in so long that they're rusty. Like, for example, Dara O'Brien was a, a great comedian back in his day, but it's been years and years since he's been working the circuit every night. So he doesn't have that same sharpness yeah. and so Absolutely. they just get people in to to write it oh i see look i'm i'm obviously naive and i'm not a comedian by any stretch of the imagination so you know i wouldn't know all of that and it's great to find that information out to be fair so it's really good have you got have you been asked have you been asked to do any um like product placement or anything on tiktok have they I mean, like TikTok sent me a hoodie, so I can just wear that every now and again, you know. But uh, what have you? Have anything come about? What have you got? <laughs> I got a. Uh, I got genuinely. I got a box of dildos through the post today. You never did. What do you yeah. mean a box? What so, a box? Well, he's not going to post them through individually, is he, Thomas? The post well, is going to post. More than one. Yeah. Why more than one? Well, again, he's going to put them in a box. The postman isn't going to individually post each dildo through the letterbox for me to collect. It's going to come in one package, isn't it? Uh, so <laughs> so I, I'm followed on here by somebody called Taylor's Toys, right? And they were like, hi, Freddie. We'd really like to send you a Valentine's Day gift box. And I was like, fucking yes to free dildos. So, um, so they so they sent us through, 
of 180 quid worth of free dildos. Um, yeah. I've got some. I've got some red bondage tape. Um, I've got a. I've got a butt plug, medium size, which I think is really funny. That they looked at me and went, well, he doesn't have a small anus, does he? Like he doesn't have a tiny rectum. He, he obviously has either a medium or large, because he's a big guy, so he obviously has a lot of poo. So we, we'll go medium. Um, Imagine they send you a triple XL, you'd be really pissed off, wouldn't you? Oh, I'm going anywhere. All uh, them dummies you get at the film. And then I got. Uh, what else did I get? I got a. Um, uh, I got a, uh, this vibrator. I got a uh, I got a flashlight, um, and I got a uh, a cock ring as well. So, okay, can I ask you, you married? Uh, no, I, I'm in a relationship. Okay, can I'm going to ask the question because obviously we can't assume. Is it with a boy or a girl, or you're not? Do you not want to say that? Uh, it's it's with a lady. Oh, that's okay. Uh, well, sometimes you can't assume. You know, you can't, one can't assume. To be fair, in the gay community, you would be classed as, I think, a bear. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, I would be a bear. There we go. Yeah, I know, I know, I know a few bears, to be fair. <laughs> I used to work. I used to work with a couple of them on a shopping channel. Mm, yeah, they were very funny. Uh, look, what what what's next for you, Freddie, on TikTok? What's your what's your what's your plans? What what do you must have a goal? Oh, they're actually in the chat. Actually, Taylor's toys. So I'll give them a little shout out again. Thank you for me. Uh... Can I just say that my daughter's name is Taylor? <laughs> really? <laughs> My moderator going mad in here saying, is that your daughter's business? I'm going, oh, it's not. It's not a business. But... <laughs> uh, so Go on, give me a shout what's, out. What's next, did you say? What's next for me? What's, what, um, what's your target? What's your plan? So what I want to do, really, is I want to uh, grow my social media to the point where I can tour. So the thing is with me is that it's seeing me live is is the best way to see me because i've been a stand-up comedian for 10 years like yeah. it's not like i started out as a tiktoker and then had to learn stand-up this is yeah. tiktok's the thing that i've had to learn so yeah. um for me personally uh, i would love to get to the point where i have enough of a following to be able to tour be that you know later on this year or next year or something like that um i think that that would be a good uh, thing to come out of this for me personally, just to be able to talk to people. What's your? Uh, have you got a tar on your on your bio? It says 250k. Is that just your next target? And you're going to change your next target? I, I so I mean, look. In an ideal world, I think that in order for me to get um, to where I want to be in terms of being able to tour, I think yeah. I am going to need to get 500k plus. I think that that's because you've got to think that like of the people on TikTok that, that you know that follow you, how many of them are going to be um, of age first of all? How yeah, many of them? That. Yeah, how many of them are going to want to buy a ticket? And then how many of them are going to be around where you are? Do you know what I mean? So yeah. because TikTok's TikTok's analytics doesn't break down exactly where everyone's from. It it just kind of goes. United Kingdom. And it's... Yeah, I think I think that's a good I think that's a good strategy to have. Can just give me one sec. Taylor's toys. Can I just say they're in my live now? Can I just say please don't send me a box of dildos because my wife will just go mad. <laughs> but DM me by all means. But please don't send me a box of dildos. What? Freddie's definitely your audience, not me. <laughs> would, she, do you know, would, would she really go mad? Well, yeah, she's uh, yeah, she's not she's not as outgoing as a uh, no. Let's not go there. We're not talking about my wife. <laughs> I might not go mad. I mean, but plug. Mm, oh, <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> right, Freddie. Look, one last thing for you, my friend. What what what? Um, if you could give somebody. I mean, you've got 150, nearly 150,000 followers. You did that fairly quickly. Uh, you didn't really try very hard, really, if you, in, in in great terms from from December. Um, what would you give as a tip to somebody who's either just starting out or wants to grow their account? Um, I would say that the best piece of advice that I can give is that you need to tell TikTok what your account is about. Like, I don't think many people 
spend enough time doing that. Like, like the whole thing with the For You page is that it, it's, it's an algorithm set up to put videos in front of people that it thinks that person will like. And it, yeah. it, it can't do that if it doesn't know what you're about. So if you're doing a, a dancing video one minute and then you're doing like a point of view video the next minute and then you're doing like a lip sync video the next minute, it, it makes it really hard for TikTok to predict what your next video is going to be. Like if I put a video... What? And who to send it to. Yeah, exactly. Like if I, if, if I put a video out tomorrow or tonight, they know that it's going to do well if it goes in front of comedy fans, people who like yeah. darker senses of humour, that kind of thing, really. Yeah. Um, you, you know, they know that I'm not going to upload a video and do like, hey, guys, three facts about sperm whales. Do you know what I mean? It's just not something that I'm going to do. So, okay, Freddie, hang on a minute. Hang on. Three, two, one. Three facts about sperm whales. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> they're actually they're actually the smallest uh, mammal in the world. They live in sperm, hence their name. Um, One more. The blue in yep. colour. So if, if you if you look at your own sperm and see little bits of blue in it, then that is a sperm whale in there. Um, <laughs> And they are endangered because people keep flushing them down the toilet and uh, wiping them up with Kleenex um, and putting them in old socks and things. So if you do see, if you do see a little bit of blue in your cum, then you need to put it in a jar and contact the RSPCA. <laughs> look, you look, you can have that material for free. I won't charge you for that, mate. That was good stuff. Uh, look, the material good I just stuff. came up with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, man. Thanks. That's very nice. <laughs> Look, Freddie, it's been a pleasure. I've got two minutes to get our Irish ready. Oh, 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 dear. Look, Freddie, thanks very much for your time. Thanks very much for supporting me. If you want to come back again, feel free. I'd have you on any time, my friend. But thank you for... And the only reason I haven't gone live before tonight is because I knew I was planning for tonight. So I didn't want to ruin our little uh, our little original chat. So come and see me anytime, mate. Okay. No worries, man. Look after yourself. Bye-bye. We'll follow Freddie Quinn, guys. Thank you, Freddie. Cheers, buddy. We are getting ready for...